I'd like to now speak with you about moxa bustion. Moxa is an herb that we use in Chinese medicine to apply heat or to get warmth or yang energy into the acupuncture points. So each way of stimulating an acupuncture point has its advantages and its disadvantages. We've talked about using acupuncture needles. We talk about using pressure. We can talk about using electrical stimulation. We can stimulate with lasers or with light. Um, one of the traditional ways of stimulating acupuncture points is to use moxa. And moxa is still used, although it does present a few specific challenges in the fact that it's an herb which is generally burned in order to create heat. Therefore, there's the problems of heat and burning and smoke and all the um, complications that might go along with including that in treatment in today's modern healthcare practice. Um, however, there are many ways of getting around some of these challenges, and we're going to look at the different options available. So there are many options available for doing moxa. I would recommend that you take the time to find an option that works for you, that works in your practice. There are things that you can do with moxa that you cannot do with acupuncture needles, and therefore um, it's worth spending a little bit of time and effort to find a way that you can use moxa in your practice practice to get those advantages for your patients. Now let's take a look at moxa. Moxa is an herb um, called mugwort or aiye in Chinese. It's uh, an artemisia. Artemisias are leaves that have a downy underside. Perhaps you're familiar with some of them. Uh, lamb's ears, sage, those are all similar in that they have those downy leaves. Um, the, the, with um, moxa, the leaf is dried and then it's put through a sieve and once it goes through the sieve it what's left on the top of that sieve after most of the sticks and bits fall through is this um, wool like material which we call moxa this is then uh, burned and manipulated so that the heat can be uh, used on uh, an acupuncture point um, if we clean that moxa a little bit more, we put it through finer and finer sieves, we end up with something that looks much lighter in color. This is green moxa, or what we call crude green moxa, and this is gold moxa, or a pure moxa. Um, there is even a super pure moxa, which is almost white in color. Um, generally, the finer the moxa is, the more pure it is, the less odor that's associated with it when it burns. It burns a little bit faster, it burns a little bit cleaner, and generally for what we call direct moxa application, we tend to use more um, of the cleaner moxa or the gold moxa rather than the green moxa. But they all have their place, so we'll take a look at that in a minute. So there are two basic ways that moxa can be used. There's Direct moxa and indirect moxa. Direct moxa means that the moxa itself is taken and placed directly on the skin and then it's lit and then that heat penetrates to the skin and then the moxa is removed at some point in the process. And depending upon at what point in the process, then direct moxa can be either non-scarring direct moxa or scarring direct moxa. Let me just show you an example of one of those. I'll show you non-scarring direct moxa. So moxa is taken and it's generally, when, when you use moxa in a loose form, and as I said before, remember there are many ways to use moxa. We're going to look at many different forms, but this is the traditional way that moxa is used. A small amount of the moxa is rolled into a tight little football shape um, and this is called a cone of moxa. And while it's not shaped quite like a cone, once it's placed on the acupuncture point, it seems to take a cone-like shape because we need to flatten the bottom out in order to get it to stand up. Let's see if I can demonstrate this for you. Oftentimes we would put a small amount of uh, a, an oil or some medium to hold the moxa in place. In fact, let me just take a little bit of balm and put just a bit on my skin. And then we'll place that cone and it will stay as we would like it to. Now, I'm going to light this. And this will begin to burn down. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to do 
um, a form of direct moxa. This is called non-scarring direct moxa. You can see there's a little bit of smoke. There's a little bit of odor. I'm not feeling any heat at all. However, it will start to feel warm in just about a few seconds. And I begin to feel the heat, and then I'm going to take the moxa off and place it in a ashtray. Um, and I felt a little bit of heat from that moxa, but it wasn't, certainly wasn't at all uncomfortable. Just a little bit of warmth that I felt. Um, and that's called non-scarring direct moxa. So the moxa is placed directly on the skin, but removed before it burns down. Scarring direct moxa, which means that I would have left that moxa on until it actually went out, um, or close to that, at least until it began to burn the skin, which would then have produced a small burn on the skin and a small scar. Um, I know that when I say that, oftentimes when people hear that for the first time, they think, well, that sounds like a, a barbaric type of treatment to actually burn someone and cause a scar. But we must remember that many, many medical procedures, surgeries, etc., cetera, um, uh, removing of warts, um, you know, we could go on with many different examples, cause scars or cause burns for an individual. It's just depend. We must always do a cost-benefit ratio, determine whether the amount of pain and the scarring that might be a result from the treatment is going to benefit the patient um, more, uh, you know, w whether that outweighs um, the benefits or whether the benefits outweigh the burning and the, and the pain and the slight scarring. Um, in most cases, uh, the benefits outweigh the discomfort, and so um, direct scarring moxa is still commonly used throughout the world, although it is probably the least common way of using moxa, certainly in the West. So let's look at some other ways that we use moxa. Now this moxa, this um, crude green moxa, or this um, more uh, refined or, or more um, cleaned up, uh, gold moxa can be rolled into a cigar shape. And here is an example of a um, crude green moxa pole or moxa cigar. And then the moxa that's inside this, this is uh, a couple of pieces of paper, um, one of them wrapping up the moxa as if it was a, again, like a cigar, uh, makes it nice and tight. And this Moxa cigar or moxa pole, moxa roll is lit simply. And once it begins to burn, we'll see that the it will begin to smoke. It will glow on the end. It becomes quite warm. And this can also be used to manipulate the heat. If I hold this an inch to two inches, possibly even two and a half inches from the skin, um, I can still feel the heat radiating there. And depending upon how we would like to work with this heat, we can put it either closer to the skin or further away. Um, with uh, This is called indirect moxa in that the moxa is certainly not touching the skin. It's not in direct contact with the skin. And this is by far the most common way to use moxa um, probably throughout the world, but certainly in the West today, is indirect moxa. Now, indirect moxa takes many forms. Uh, indirect moxa in the form of a moxa pole uh, means it's indirect in that there's air in between the moxa and the skin. Although we can use other mediums in between the moxa and the skin, and we can use other ways that we can benefit from the heat and from the healing qualities of the herb of moxa itself um, without actually causing burns. Now, the smoke that's coming off of this moxa pole is quite acrid. Most green leaves, when they're burned, smell very similar to one another, and it's difficult for people to distinguish between them. But it's a strong acrid herb, like burning leaves. Um, and oftentimes, practitioners find that this is something that they can't abide in their practice. Uh, it may uh, be that just the smoke itself is not acceptable because of smoke detectors in the practice. There may be neighbors that might complain about this odor. Um, you may just want not to smell it on yourself or on your clothes, um, or your patients may object to it. Therefore, there are other ways that we can use mox and still get those benefits without all of those uh, challenges that are associated with using um, crude green moxa in a pole. I'm going to um, snuff this out here in a moxa um, snuffer, I guess you would call it. 
um, and show you some other examples of how we might use moxa that would be um, will solve some of these problems right um, let me first show you some uh, uh, solution for solving a direct moxa problem um, the burns associated with direct moxa um, and the and the discomfort and the rolling of the moxa can be somewhat um, alleviated by using pre-rolled moxa. Now this is extremely small, these bits of moxa, but sometimes um, just a tiny bit of heat from moxa can be sufficient. And so uh, a large cone of moxa is oftentimes not necessary um, and we can accomplish the same thing with just a very small bit of moxa like this. So you can see here, let me make a little space, that if I light this bit of moxa here and burn it down, um, there is a small amount of smoke, but that smoke is insignificant. This would not be, it's the same odor that was coming off of the moxa pole that we just had, but the um, amount of smoke is uh, minimal and in fact is oftentimes not noticed. Now I'm feeling that burn as it hits my skin, but it's again uh, not a significant burn. So that is actually direct scarring moxa, but you can see that the burn that was made there is um, very small, and not even really noticeable, um, but uh, this can cause a, a small tiny scar perhaps. Um, uh, there's, there's a little bit of a burn there. Um, so that will oftentimes accomplish what we need to accomplish with moxa um, without causing uh, undue pain or any um, significant scarring. And that would be using these pre-rolled um, moxas. Now, another way that we can do uh, moxa in an indirect fashion is uh, traditionally is moxa on salt. So I have here a little matchbox with some matches taken out and some salt spread in the bottom. There's, you know, perhaps uh, a, th a quarter of an inch maybe of salt here. Um, the way that this is used is that in it, traditionally in China, moxa was used on some points, for instance, on the belly button uh, through the medium of salt. Um, so um, we could put salt or if we wanted to to use salt on a particular point, we might put a small mound of salt on the skin, and then we could put the moxa on top of the salt and burn it. Um, if in order to make that a little bit more convenient, we can use a matchbox, which works quite well. We can take uh, some moxa, some loose moxa, and we can put that on the matchbox and light on top of the salt and light that, and then once this burns down and warms up the salt and heats the salt, we can then place that on an acupuncture point, and that heat then will, gener will um, transfer through the salt and into the acupuncture point. This is convenient for points such as do 20, which are right on the top of the head, a difficult point to burn moxa on without um, burning someone's hair or uh, causing some uh, discomfort or some very awkward positions that the person might be put in. Um, once this moxa heats through the salt, this needle could be placed right on the point and held there. I'm sorry, this moxa could be placed right on the point and held there until that heat penetrates into the point. Some other ways of um, Let's just move some of this out of the way. And we'll look at some other forms of moxa, using moxa indirectly. So with these forms of moxa, we've we can see that the moxa has been pressed very tightly into these pellets. Um, so this is raw moxa, it's crude moxa, um, and it's been pressed into a tight pellet Right? Um, and uh, fitted so that it will fit into various instruments. So these are oftentimes called uh, belly balls. The actual name, the Korean name is bong rei. Um, but it's a, uh, oftentimes called belly balls because it's a way to use moxa 
um, on someone's belly, especially on the belly button, right over the belly button, which is renate, is a particularly useful point for strengthening uh, digestive process. And moxibustion can be very helpful for those with weak digestive processes um, to, to uh, use moxa on renate. And so this belly bowl here um, can be lit. And again, it would be lit in the same manner. We would just light the moxa. And you can see that begins to glow. And as this would then burn, this will burn for about six to seven minutes. Um, as you can see, there's also a hole down the center. Perhaps you can see that on the video. There's a hole down the center of this plug of moxa. Um, this is a similar one, it's a, a slight, it's a different company, but the, the principle is the same. Um, so that heat will transfer down through that hole as this continues to burn. And as this would sit on someone's belly or, or on someone's back or on some acupuncture point, then that heat would be concentrated right into this area. It would be, it's not unusual to re, when you remove this from a patient after this is burned down, for there to be a nice pink area under the skin where the skin has been heated up um, from the moxa. Okay, now let's take a look at um, uh, another form of using these um, tightly compressed uh, bits of moxa. This is a another standard way that moxa is used. Um, this moxa has been compressed again into one of these uh, small plugs. It also has a hole that runs down the center of it, which runs all the way through to the bottom. It has a little bottom that, a little sticky part on the bottom, so that, and there's a little bit of cardboard here. So this cardboard allows some space between the moxa and the skin. And again, this would be placed on the skin and uh, simply lit. And then this would also continue to burn down and this takes just a, a few minutes also to burn down. And this puts the heat very directly on a particular acupuncture point. So if we were using a series of points, for instance, on the bladder meridian down someone's back, we might want to put five or six or seven of these and burn that moxa down. Of course, we always need to be careful whenever using moxa to make sure that we're not causing any burns inadvertently on a patient. If we're planning to burn a patient, for therapeutic value, we're going to do direct moxa. That's one thing. But if we're doing indirect moxa, the, um, there is no therapeutic reason for causing a burn. Then we want to be very careful, even with something like this, which it looks like there's a good amount of um, uh, space between the bottom of the moxa and the skin. There's still the possibility that this could cause a burn on the patient. So we, we need to monitor very carefully whenever we're using moxa on a patient. This is another type of instrument that uses, uh, again, compressed moxa. So the moxa is compressed into a tight rod um, and it can be placed into this holder. The holder has uh, various adjustments between a spring and between these two parts so that we can adjust the distance between the end of this rod of moxa and the end of the tiger warmer, which is the name of this particular instrument. So the moxa then is lit as usual. And once it begins to glow, it begins to get warm, of course, we can put it inside this little apparatus. And this allows us to then, again, it's an indirect moxa form. We feel the heat coming through the end of this. Now the smoke is coming off and we can manipulate this to stimulate specific acupuncture points. This is a very comfortable and enjoyable uh, treatment. Most people um, enjoy using this. It can be used for treating sinus problems. It can be used for treating uh, painful conditions. There are many applications for using uh, a tiger warmer.
There are a few other instruments that we can use also to manipulate the heat from crude moxa um, before we move on to the next form of moxa. And I just want to show you them. There are moxa boxes and moxa instruments which are um, fairly commonly used, although uh, certainly, again, um, less common than some of the more modern forms. This is called the moxa box, and you can see it's been um, used, uh, it's been through um, quite a bit of clinical use. Um, it's a wooden box that's designed to have fires burned inside of it, actually. So um, let me take some of these parts apart, and I will show you. You can look at the bottom of this. There's a screen in here. Um, and so there's a screen that's about an inch from the bottom of the box, gives us a little bit of space. We can open up the front and the back of the box to allow air to pass through there. There's a lid um, that's got a little metal on the top to protect it um, that we can put on top. And what we do with a moxa box is to take a handful of moxa, a small handful of moxa, place it inside the box on top of the screen, and then this can be lit. And that, of course, will create, once the moxa catches, it will create quite a bit of heat and quite a bit of smoke. And that heat will radiate down through the bottom of the box. We can put the lid on the box. The smoke will start coming out the sides. And then this box can be placed over top of any area of the body to create more uh, heat um, in that particular area. Another form of moxa um, besides a moxa box, and of course you can see one of the things about a moxa box is it does create a significant amount of smoke. So this is uh, not commonly used nowadays uh, in most acupuncture practices, although um, uh, my teacher, Dr. So, was um, very, uh, a very prominent user, a very common user of moxa and used it significantly within his practice. So I have used moxa quite a bit throughout my practice and um, I find that a, a moxa box will do uh, wonderful things for in terms of treatment. Oftentimes, even though we have to deal with significant amounts of smoke, we can still get um, great results using moxa for things like uh, uh, pain secondary to the menstrual cycle, things like that. Okay, um, an, uh, a slightly less moxa, uh, less smoke intense. All right, I have to find some place to put this. A slightly less smoke intense experience of using moxa, but still rather intense in terms of smoke, is using a moxa instrument. And so this moxa instrument, as you can see, this is a brass moxa instrument. And again, it's had quite a bit of use um, this, and uh, has served me well over the years. Um, it has a little screen in the bottom and it has a place where we can put a small bit of moxa in here. We can light this moxa then, put the lid back on it, the room is starting to get a little smoky, so I'm not going to keep lighting the moxa, but you can imagine that we can just light that. This would then begin to smoke, and then you can use it as almost like an iron, and we run this back and forth over different areas. Again, this is um, probably, when it comes to moxa, what my patients have enjoyed the most. They feel like they're getting ironed with this, and, and uh, it's a very uh, soothing and enjoyable treatment, as well as being particularly useful for uh, a number of different disorders whenever there's cold, for instance, in, a, in the meridians. Um, this little bit here that I uh, forgot to mention to you, but I want to just point it out. This uh, goes into the moxa box. And this is also, I, I just want to point it out because it's a common occurrence, is that there are um, instruments oftentimes designed to accommodate the moxa pole. So you'll recall the moxa pole that we used earlier, um, right? The moxa pole that is, is used to warm up acupuncture points. There are, off, because those are so common that we can find instruments that are designed to hold bits and pieces of moxa pole. So we could light these 
parts of amoxipol, put them in here, they would be held in place, and we can slide that then into our still smoking moxa box. This could sit right in here. So rather than using loose moxa and having to have loose moxa in the office, we could do it all with moxa poles. Okay, now let's move on from this smoky moxa to um, some ways that we can use moxa that are a little bit less messy and a little bit less smoky. Remember I said using moxa is very important, so I would uh, highly recommend that you pay again, close attention to these other styles of using moxa that will be less smoky and certainly um, not involve the odor that's associated with moxa treatment. Now, um, this is a smokeless moxa pole or what's called a low smoke moxa pole. Um, and you can see, again, it is pole or cigar shaped once again, but it's made from a charcoal, which is made from moxa um, so moxa is burned in a low oxygen environment and pressed into a charcoal, which makes a nice hard um, uh, bit of, of charcoal that we can then light. It's a little bit more difficult to light than a regular moxa pole, although it's not, um, not significantly a problem. But it does take a few more seconds to get this going. Um, you can see that there is a little bit of smoke that begins to come off of this, although it is significantly less than a regular moxipole. It's beginning to glow. Hard for you to probably see that, but this is burning. There is heat coming off of here. So this is a little smoke or no smoke moxipole. Um, it can be used in the same way as a regular moxipole, as in that we would hold it close to the acupuncture point and we would feel the heat. We can hold it anywhere from about an inch or half an inch away to about two inches or possibly a little bit more. So we can feel that heat coming from the acupuncture, um, I mean, coming on the acupuncture point from the moxipole. Now, this form of little smoke or no smoke moxa is also used in other instruments, as one might expect. And so we will find, for instance, um, a version of the belly bowl, which we looked at a little bit earlier. We looked at a belly bowl earlier, which was this plug of moxa, which was um, inserted in here to put over top of the belly button or to put over top of some other acupuncture points so the heat will come down through it. Um, we have similar ones um, that are made with uh, smokeless moxa or non-smoke moxa. Again, it works a similar way. We would light these, um, again, a little bit, there we go. We would light these with a lighter and then you could place this on top of the point. This particular one has five smaller um, uh, bits of moxa in it, but we can purchase these with uh, one large one in the middle, similar to the other belly bowl. We can also find smaller versions of these. Um, for an individual point or for a smaller point, uh, something that we wouldn't want to heat up nearly as much as we would heat up with the larger uh, belly ball. Um, there are some more traditional versions of these types of instruments. This one happens to be made of clay. Um, and though while it's a, a traditional, a more traditional style, um, it also uses, again, the little smoke or no smoke moxa that we can put in there. And so this is another way that we can um, heat up the acupuncture points with moxa. Let me talk to you now about another form of indirect moxa, which is moxa on the handle of the needle. This is a very standard way of doing moxa, doing indirect moxa, and combining acupuncture and moxa together. So um, it's a way that I, I highly recommend. Uh, I will show you a uh, traditional way and then the modern way of doing this, um, both of which uh, work quite well. Um, I would recommend that we use the uh, more modern way, but you can take a look at them both and, and form your opinion. So let's take a look down here at this practice pad. And let me show you. If we're going to burn moxa on the handle of the needle, the first thing we need to remember, of course, is that the handle of the needle needs to be able to handle moxa. No pun intended. So the handle needs to be a metal handled needle rather than a plastic handled needle. And I'm going to use here a two inch metal handled needle. I'm going to insert it, leaving at least an inch to an inch and a half 
of space or an inch and a quarter of space um, between the, of shaft between the skin and the handle in order to allow for the heat from the moxa to not um, uh, scorch the skin. We don't want it to get too hot. We just want it to get slightly hot. So um, the, the traditional way of using moxa on the handle of a needle is to just simply take a small amount of moxa and here I will use some pure moxa, some gold moxa. Take a small amount of moxa. It can be simply made into a small uh, ball and then it can be clumped very simply around the handle of the needle like that and then lit. This will then burn down and we will be feeling this heat coming down from the needle onto the skin. We let it continue to burn until it goes out, which will take just a, a few seconds. It doesn't take all that long. Um, and you would be, the patient would certainly be feeling that heat coming down through the needle. It's not uncomfortable at all. In fact, it's quite comfortable. Um, this moxa is still glowing on the inside, so it may take a, um, a few minutes before it cools down sufficiently, but I'm going to remove it right now and just place it off to the side. And I'm going to show you um, a more, uh, well, perhaps a safer, um, a more um, modern way of doing this type of treatment. And this is with um, something called MoxSafe, M-O-X-S-A-F-E. And it comes from a company called Siren, um, who are the manufacturers of the needles that we use. And uh, while this um, uh, seems a bit more complicated, it is certainly a, a very efficient and very effective way of doing MOXA um, on acupuncture points in your practice. So the MoxSafe system comes with a... Uh, uh, a group, I think there's a hundred of these little um, moxa donuts. And these, are, again, are um, low smoke or no smoke moxa. Um, so moxa compressed into a charcoal. And it also comes with these small little spring devices that fit on the top of the needles. So we would place the needle in the skin. We would set one of these little springs on top, and then we would drop this little bit of moxa on top of that spring. This holds everything in place, um, keeps everything from uh, causing any anxiety about moxa falling off or any inadvertent burns. Um, these can be lit very simply and easily. This moxa is... Um, designed to light very quickly. And you can see just with a very little bit of glowing there, a little bit of burning, that's enough to get this started. Um, then we can just wait for this to warm up. This takes about seven minutes to work, um, uh, to fully burn through. So this will slowly heat up and then slowly start to cool down over the course of about seven minutes. Um, once complete though, um, then that moxa for that point has been done and we wouldn't need to reapply it. With the mox on the handle of the needle, as I mentioned earlier, using, for instance, just the pure mox clumped around the handle of the needle, we generally need to do that three, five, or seven times. With this particular system, because it's a very slow um, uh, application of the heat, that it has much more time to sink in over the course of seven minutes. Usually one application of this is su sufficient for each treatment. Okay, so um, let's move on to just a few other uh, types of moxa um, that can be used in practice and are commonly used in practice. Um, moxa can also be made into a, uh, an extract. So we can extract moxa into either a liniment, right, an alcohol liniment, or we can extract moxa into a, uh, a bomb or into a... Um, into an oil. So we can um, do basic, and these are very simple extractions um, by simply soaking moxa and perhaps some other herbs. This one has a few other herbs that are used for treating painful conditions um, incorporated into it. Um, this is a spray. 
and you can spray it onto an acupuncture point. Um, this again is a, a bomb and it can be spread onto an acupuncture point. You could use this for, you could use either of these for working uh, with massage. You could use either of these for working with cupping, um, with gua sha. Um, and oftentimes these are also used for spraying onto an acupuncture point and then putting a heat lamp on top of that so that we can get the effects of moxa without actually burning moxa. Now these are, um, in my opinion, probably not as effective as moxa, but certainly a very good second choice. So there are uh, different brands um, of moxa spray, um, a few different brands of moxa bomb as well. So to use the essence of moxa and then to apply some external heat sources, also, uh, as I mentioned, a, a quite common way of using moxa, um, probably not quite as effective as using actual burning moxa, but not a bad second choice. There are just a couple other ways, and I've got a few examples of them. Um, there are, uh, as you probably have seen, there are self-heating um, hand warmers and foot warmers that we oftentimes buy if we're going skiing or something like that, that we can put in our boots or our gloves. That same technology is employed um, for moxa, where we can take um, uh, these um, little pre-assembled uh, packages that have some moxa, and I think they've got um, metal filings and some other stuff in there that causes them to heat up as they're, when they're exposed to oxygen. So we expose these to the air. There's a little peel-off back. We can stick this onto an acupuncture point, like Stomach 36 perhaps, and if we peel the top off again, uh, let's see if we can get this opened up. It'll end up looking something like that. It would stick to an acupuncture point. And this will slowly heat up over the course of um, a few minutes. And it will stay warm for some time, probably a few hours. Um, so it's not nearly as intense as using burning moxa. But it does give you a very similar um, uh, effect. And there is moxa in here. So um, it has some of the effects of moxa. Um, another way that people use moxa is to use something like this. These are simply small little heating elements. So this is, I think, originally designed um, for treating uh, bug bites, mosquito bites, and things like that by heating them up so that it will take the itch out of them. Um, but it is these are commonly employed uh, instruments such as these for warming up small uh, areas, for warming up acupuncture points. They don't have all the qualities, certainly, that moxa has. The only quality that it has, similar to moxa, is the heat. Um, and moxa is a, a special herb that does have many different qualities, and we talk about it in other areas of this program. Um, but this is uh, used by some practitioners. I, I haven't uh, used it very much in practice, and so I can't really vouch for the effectiveness of it. But um, there are many different ways that moxa can be applied, that heat can be applied to the body, and I recommend that you explore some of them. Find one that works well in your practice.